see an enlightened man is more or less a madman for the world. Osho himself says this. He appears mad because he is not operating from the mind. Something as simple as there is another center to your being apart from your mind is hard to understand for people. For them, mind is their biggest ally. Mind is their eternal companion. Mind is their problem solver. It is the ego massager. Mind is the yes man. Without the mind, you would not know what to do with your life. Everything you know about you comes from your mind. But an enlightened person operates from the center of his being. Mind is just a tool that he uses. He uses it when he needs it. When he doesn't want it, he is not living in the mind. He is not thinking all the time. He can set the mind aside. And he does that every time he goes into meditation. Why does he still sit in meditation after enlightenment? What was the necessity for Buddha to stay awake during the night? Where we get the famous reclining Buddha pose from. His body was at rest, but he was awake. He was in meditation. Almost all enlightened individuals continue sitting in meditation after their enlightenment. They don't say, now I have found it. I have become it. There is no need for me to connect with it anymore. What is the necessity to be in that state? Once you realize the truth, there is really no need to struggle to connect with it. But you can still operate either from the mind or from that center. You have a choice. When you are thinking about something, when you are interacting with people, when you are doing anything worldly, it could be brushing your teeth, to eating, to walking, to teaching, all these require your mind. You cannot be in a state of no mind. But your original reality is a no mind. You have become a no mind. There is no ego there. It is the ego that holds on to the mind even when it is not necessary. It is the ego that clings to the mind. Enlightenment is an experience where your ego is gone. All the other faculties are there. Your body is there. Your mind is there. Your thoughts are there. But that clinging ego is gone. Now that makes all the difference to how you live and where you live from. It is the attachment to our ego and our ego's attachment to our mind that puts us right in the middle of the mind, whether we want it or not. That is why 
you cannot simply tell your mind to shut up and it will listen it won't it will create an argument out of shut up because you are right in the middle of it that is the normal state of existence most individuals are familiar with that is the only state they know so they cannot even imagine being without thoughts it seems like such a far fetched idea it almost seems impossible the question is how do i know that i am without my thoughts because if i am sitting if i am telling myself that i am sitting i need my mind if i can hypothetically imagine a scenario where all my thoughts are gone the only way i can see myself is like a perfect madman and that is the definition of the word mad in the human society the one who has lost his mind an enlightened person is also the one who has lost his mind quite literally so there is a similarity between our understanding of madness and the state in which a buddha is he is literally operating from the space of no mind that changes the way he uses the mind that changes the way he sees other minds that changes the way he sees the world because that disconnection has happened he has become that center which is the same center you are operating from the same center existence is operating from he has become something different from the mind and the body because you cannot understand what that something different is and anything that your mind cannot understand it will simply categorize as madness it is impossible not to see an enlightened man as a madman and you can see the reflections of that madness in his work it is not possible or rather it is not right to call osho a teacher because a teacher is consistent a teacher has a method a plan and he has a subject to teach osho spoke from the center of his being of course he was aware of what he was speaking he had a sense of what he is going to talk about but none of his speeches were prepared they were not rehearsed they were not edited now when you are operating from such a sense of freedom when you want to say what you want to say you don't care about being right you don't worry about the consequences of your actions or words now all this is nothing but madness because we have built a world based on structure based on being polite you have to watch what you say you have to watch how you behave 
that is the definition of social intelligence if you are just yourself then you are socially disconnected just like a madman so the only way to understand osho's teachings and his philosophy is to understand that space from which he spoke if you fail to understand that space you can be sure that you will misunderstand him completely he would be way too inconsistent he would be saying the same thing and contradicting himself in two different scenarios one day he will be for a particular idea an idea that you are for for so you are excited that he shares your views you connect with him in your mind you fall in love with his teachings after a couple of days speaking on the same topic he totally contradicts himself he is against that idea now what happens to your connection what happens to your relationship with him it is on shaky grounds because it was entirely dependent on his words you didn't care about the space from which he was speaking you were preoccupied with ideas now for an enlightened my, mind for an enlightened man ideas are tools they are used in context in certain contexts the same tool is used differently only when you look at the message in totality put it in perspective can you understand what he is trying to say if you try to dissect his teachings if you try to find his core teachings his core philosophy you will not find any he himself says it is impossible to make my teachings into a philosophy because i am so contradictory how would you be able to reconcile all my contradictions philosophers are consistent they take great care to make sure that they don't contradict themselves they hate the idea of contradicting themselves because their identity is fully connected to their thoughts and what they are saying if they contradict themselves and if someone points it out it almost feels like they have betrayed themselves an enlightened man has none of those problems he is existing in a totally different space he can contradict himself all the time laugh about it have no sense of responsibility for what he has said only because there is no personality guiding his thoughts and actions when you occupy the center of your being which is the center of existence itself you can be totally certain that it is using you in the right way as a mind and body you completely surrender to that process you don't care about contradicting yourself because in that moment that space existence consciousness is allowing the contradictions to happen it is simply using you to talk about itself this is how big a difference 
there is between an enlightened man and a normal human being. An enlightened man is a totally different phenomenon altogether. But all you can see is the outside. You cannot see that space because you're not in that space. For you, it is impossible to see anything than another person. You will have the same judgments about him as you would have with anybody else. You would see anger, you would see fear, you would see jealousy, you would see all the emotions because that is the only way you know how to read a person. Yes, all these emotions are there. But where is he? He's nowhere there. He's somewhere deep, far away from the influences of the mind and all those emotions. So that space has to be understood. Once you connect with that space that an enlightened being operates from, Osho operated from, then you can distill his entire teachings into few basic core techniques, methods. In that regard, Osho was extraordinarily consistent. And not only him, all enlightened beings have been spectacularly consistent when it comes to that method that they had chosen for themselves. 